All right, and welcome back to another video, guys. I just had to share this aggressive growl class setup. This is going to be a really awesome class setup for those who want to play super aggressive with the growl. It's literally like an AR SMG hybrid. So let's get into the class setup really quick. So the barrel that we're going to be using is the XRK Season MK2. This is going to increase our damage range and bullet velocity. Now, the damage range does get increased quite significantly by 25%. You'll be able to get into those mid to long range gunfights no problem and still be able to melt your enemies and that's really the key feature of this class setup and what you need to use. There is a con of aim down sight speed but it's very minimal and we do have other attachments that do mitigate that such as the no stock attachment which is going to give us more movement speed as well as give us more aim down sight speed. Now next for the rear grip we're going to be using the XRK Void 2 so this is basically like stippled grip tape. It gives you that aim down sight speed as well as your sprint to fire speed. For our ammunition we are going to be using the 60 round magazine and when you play aggressive you're most likely going to go up against multiple enemies at a time so it's better safe than sorry to have as much ammo as possible when you need to get into those gunfights so moving on for the underbarrel we're using the merc foregrip this is going to be able to help us control that recoil from long distance as well as that hip fire accuracy for whenever we do get into those close quarter combat so the next portion of the video i am going to be breaking down my gameplay using this exact same setup and since we're not using ghost for a change this is going to be something that you guys can learn from of how to actually stay alive when you're not using a stealth perk like ghost or stealth attachments like monolithic suppressor i do hope you find this video helpful and if you would like to see more breakdown videos in the future make sure to leave a like on this video so i know that this is the content that you want to continue to see if you're new around here make sure to subscribe join turbo nation today i'd really love it if you guys would join me in my journey to 100k we actually just hit 85,000 subscribers yesterday and i'm so thankful for all the support you guys have been showing to me on my channel lately i really appreciate it so yeah guys i hope you guys enjoy today's video and i will see you in the gameplay we're playing on azir cave man how many of you guys enjoy or dislike playing on azir cave i just want to know leave let me know down below in the comments but yeah when i spawn in from this area i like to stick to the outskirts of the map here i want to have a good vantage point from the outside looking in now let me just pause it here real quick so as you can see my positioning is very good i'm standing behind these barrels i'm pre-aiming down this line of sight because that is where the enemies are most likely going to be spawning in from typically enemies like to go up here that's why i'm pre-aiming here because i want to beat them to the spot i also want to establish good positioning and as you can see before i proceed here i also do quickly glance to my left to make sure that there's no enemies there keeping an eye on me so i also do notice some activity going on in the rug shop but before i do that of course i'm gonna go check the cave make sure that everything is clear and instead of going in for the flank even if i knew 100 that there was an enemy there i decided to throw my c4 now the reason why i threw my c4 just like this is because it's just the easier kill i don't need to go directly inside the rug shop because i might be risking myself from being flanked by enemies who might be running in through this area right here because again you have to keep in mind it is the beginning of the game so there might be enemies coming from the cave area and coming into here to help give their teammates backup so that's why i just decided to throw this c4 get the job done for me and now i'm going to quickly rotate because there could be enemies coming in from behind me so i'm going to go around here i'm going to pre-aim the cave and now i'm going to go in here and this area is clear so now i'm focused in on this line of sight because that is where they're going to be spawning in from now i'm not going to push all the way in i'm just going to check my lines of sight so that's going to be outside windows in the doorways and here we go one enemy from my line of sight and i was able to take him out now again i'm pre-aiming aiming down that area now the reason why i went down here is because teammate decided to push through that door so he's covering that line of sight right there so i'm gonna actually come out here and try to get a different angle and now teammate decides to you know switch his angle that's why i looked at him real quick so i'm keeping an eye on this area right now i did notice on the mini map that my teammate died so let's back it up real quick if you missed it so pay attention to the mini map there he is he died so i'm going in to investigate and i'm pre-aiming and you know i should have killed that guy but I noticed that he was using a crossbow and you know how super overpowered a crossbow is like you can't really stand a chance against him man that fire rate or whatever the release of that bow is just unmatched I'm still gonna make my way back to the rug shop but first I do hear this footsteps I knew he was there so I jumped bunny hopped and I was able to get that kill I'm 100% sure he saw me first but the fact that I popped out out of the corner out of nowhere I'm sure he was not expecting me to do that that's why I won that gunfight so I am being shot here I'm trying to go 
uh, around their spawn right now. I'm trying to rotate accordingly for a good flank. This guy shows and goes. So he shows himself first and then he goes away right here in this situation. This is a little underrated tip here is notice how he's out of the picture right now, but also pay attention to how I keep firing my weapon. Just like that. It's called a pre-fire. So if you know that there's an enemy right there and you want to make sure that you win that gunfight, just keep pre-firing your weapon. Of course, don't do it for the whole time until you're empty on your clip. Just do it enough to the point where you do get the kill. So what my next move is by going into the cave is to take control of the middle of the cave. I love also patrolling the cave it's a really good spot to be able to get some easy kills because you only really have to worry about two things here one is going to be this entrance here all right and also check this area right here as well sometimes there are enemies who like to just kneel right here and just pre-aim so my attention's turned to the middle area here i missed my shots but i'm expecting him to come back out and that's what people tend to do if you miss your shots and you may have heard this from my previous videos always be ready for that enemy to come back out and get you with a vengeance and that's what he did right there and i was able to just predict his movement so i have two teammates here in front of me so i don't need to worry about this area so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come out here for a different vantage point and try to cover more ground i barely just see that guy because he blended in so well with the map but i was able to do the drop shot maneuver which definitely saved my life and how i was able to dodge those bullets now i got the assist right there but i still noticed that there's a lot of activity going on here i throw my c4 and hoping for a kill but i missed but now i was able to get that kill as soon as he went up the stairs so now I'm going to direct my attention to this area right here right away because all my teammates are on this side of the map. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on my dead silence first just so that nobody hears my footsteps. That's also something you want to be conscious of. And also I'm taking a look at my right here because if I'm going to be going towards this way, I want to make sure that this area is clear first and nobody sees me going here. You know, I want to be as sneaky as possible. That's why I quickly take a glance there i'm gonna go up on top of this truck enemies already firing as you can see on that compass and he's right there in front of our face he's firing already at us but we've got a good head glitch and that also takes him by surprise he's very upset about that man he was talking mad trash every single time that i killed him but that's all right now one thing i do want to say really quickly about this area before you decide to push and the fact that i'm here all alone and all our teammates are on the other side of the map there's a possibility that there could be more enemies here so it's always a good idea to just pre-aim first before you go out into an area and make your move because sometimes there'll be people up here and broken or they might be down here just still standing there after they spawned in so i'm going to continue on with my strategy and as you can see by the compass there is some activity going on here and he did kill three of my teammates so i definitely want to take advantage of this because right now i've got a good flank i'm on high ground got a good vantage point and i was able to get the kill and that grants me me my VTOL so now I'm gonna call my VTOL right away because I'm looking at the score right now it's 27 to 28 I want to give us some good distance between these guys so before I go out there I did notice that my teammate died on the mini map and that tells me that there are enemies in this area so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take even more higher ground by going up on this rock and I'm gonna pre-aim and wait I'm gonna pay attention to this line of sight as well as this line of sight see the skull that's an indicator that my teammate died so I'm gonna pre-aim here and I also do notice right here an enemy that came in through the camp that's why i decided to just stay up here first and wait until the situation unfolds my veto got a couple kills now i'm thinking it's safe to go ahead and push and try to flank now what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to go to the other spawn and just patrol the outer parts of the map so i'm going to take high ground here that's why i'm up here and i'm going to slow down my roll because i know my footsteps are loud and i'm here all alone i don't have dead silence i'm on the outside looking in right now as you can see we did come up on a kill right there but let me back it up really quick now before i enter this area the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make sure i pre-aim here first because there could be enemies in there just camping and i also check here that's second on my checklist and then third is going to be this area because that's exactly where they're all going to be i mean again look at my mini map i'm the only one out here so it's always a good idea to double check your surroundings so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rotate over here on this side just to get a good vantage point of their spawn i don't know 100 if they're going to be here or not but like i said earlier 
it's always a good idea to always check on those lines of sight just in case. Now they did call a counter UAV, but my teammates fortunately were good enough to be able to take down that counter UAV. They did call in a UAV. So that's why I decided to retreat and meet up with my teammates. The reason why I retreated is because I'm not wearing ghost. I'm actually not wearing ghost for once. You never want to be outside on your own flanking. If you're not wearing ghost and they have a UAV up, you're just going to stick out like a sore thumb on the enemy radar. So over here, I do notice that the personal UAV is approaching in my area on the minimap. So this was a dead giveaway and why I already knew to look in this area. Also, I popped on my dead silence so he wasn't able to hear my footsteps. And that's how I was able to get the easy kill. Now, at this point, it's still unpredictable. I don't know if there's more enemies here because they also still have their UAV up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself in a better position tactically behind this window right here so I can get a good vantage point, a good clear view of if there's enemies coming from here or from up here at least. East, I have this window and this nice little head glitch to keep me alive. So I decided to go ahead and push since there was no activity and I am actually getting shot. So I quickly go up here for the height advantage and I take the enemy out just like that. And I'm pretty sure he had no suspicion that I was going to be up there after he was trying to shoot me. So thanks to the advanced UAV, I'm able to take this guy out with my C4. He's behind that truck. I decided to just not risk it at all because I want to stay on my streak. So that's why I threw my C4 because if I were to just come up to the guy, there's a possibility that he could just turn around and kill me. So that's why I didn't want to take that risk. So from here on out, I'm just positioning myself accordingly based on what I see on the minimap. Now, looking back on this footage, I definitely could have just shot the guy that's coming up the well, but you know, in game, you know, what are you gonna do, right? So here he is right here. I see his little head. I, I literally could have just shot the guy from the beginning and saved my C4s. And now at this point, the advanced UAV has expired. I don't know where these guys are 100%. They know that I killed their teammate. So I want to get myself out of that situation, but I still want to stay around here because I want to rack up more kills. So I'm going to pop my dead silence on right now so they can't hear my footsteps. I want to be as unpredictable as possible. So I'm going to come around over here. I also do hear the enemy footsteps coming this way. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to pre-aim and I'm going to take him out. So I'm also checking to make sure if anybody's going to be flanking me from this area. That's why I turned my attention here. And I actually did see somebody right here. So instead of just going straight for the line drive kill, I just patiently wait. I cut the corner over here and I wait for him so I can get a cleaner kill and my bullets connect 100%, you know, instead of just chasing the guy through the houses and whatnot. So now I'm over here. I'm just getting a good vantage point as well, looking into their spawn. And I'm noticing that I'm not having a lot of teammates anymore on the minimap. So I kind of slow my roll a little bit and I'm going to take control of the rug shop because I like to consider the rug shop a bit of a power position as well. But of course, you don't want to stay here too long. Thanks to the compass, I do know that there are enemies in the cave. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close this door for audio cues in case somebody tries to open it. And I actually do hear footsteps. So I toss that C4 outside. I fail miserably. But now I know for a fact that this guy's going to come in rushing me. So I try to get out of the situation as fast as possible because I'm still on the streak. I want to see how far I can go without dying. So I come down here, I slide and I quickly cancel my slide, turn around and get the guy. Let me just replay that really quick just so you can see how effective it is. So I slide, I cancel, turn around. And as you can see, he was actually pointed in the other direction. He thought that I was actually going to run outside, but then I did the little bait and switch on him and I was able to take him out. Yeah, and he definitely called me the B word right there. He was really upset about it, but you know, whatever, who cares? It's just video games at the end of the day. Now I'm looking to take control of the cave once again. I've got my teammates behind me. Teammates actually died behind me, so I'm going to turn around and investigate. Maybe I can help my teammates out. It's a fairly close game at this point, man. I think I'm carrying super hard right now, so I'm going to pay attention to this area right here. So I turn my attention here to the left because this area of the cave was actually cleared out by my teammate. He was here earlier, so that must mean that the enemies are coming out from the outside. And I was able to see and hear the guy's footsteps. So that's why I was able to get the easy kill and before he could even realize that I was there. So I'm slowly like rotating around the map. You know, as you can see, there's a pattern here. You know, wherever my team moves, I'm kind of like moving along with them, but not really. As you can see, I'm still by myself, but still within distance of my own teammates. Now, this part, I decided to turn on my dead silence to make my movements less predictable. And I wanted to go ahead and flank over here because that's where I'm most likely going to get a flanked. 
unfortunately there was somebody camping up top there but you know there's nothing you can do about that you know i think what i could have done better in this situation was actually to go up here first instead you know that was a big mistake that i knew that i could have done to avoid dying there is go up here for higher ground just to be on the safe side and i probably would have stood a chance against that guy he had the hide advantage there so you know there really wasn't anything i can do in that situation I'm looking at the score you know the match is pretty much almost over and at this point I'm just like, you know what, whatever. Like, you see, the, the game already ended right there. It didn't really matter that I died. But the fact that I outsmarted the enemy so many times as well as thought consciously about my positioning, you know, every move that I make is calculated. I don't just move around the map randomly. There's always a reason for moving around the map. And that's a mindset that you need to adopt as well if you want to get better at this game. So we finished off at 23 kills three deaths, a 7.67 KD ratio. And I'm not even gonna lie, I was sweating super hard again. Like the guy was talking trash every time I killed him. So, you know, that motivated me even more to try my best to die as less as possible and obviously win the game. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like on it so that I know that this is the content that you wanna continue to see. And subscribe if you're new around here. Join Turbo Nation today, make it official. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.